For the longest time, physicists have argued over light's physical properties. Sometimes it behaves more like particles, and other times it acts more like waves. The reason why this was such a huge dilemma in physics is because light can switch between these two behaviors based on how we observe or interact with it. But recently, an accidental discovery was made when scientists conducted experiments to learn more about light. Join as us, we talk about how the double slit experiment just made a huge breakthrough in our quest for time travel and how it's changed the world of physics. Now, the one thing that has always been consistent about light has been its speed. But it turns out that in some situations, light might not be that consistent, and it could move slower or faster than expected, even without dense materials around. The thing is, sometimes light takes a path through time and space that's not what we expect. However, despite that, it still ends up in the same place it was supposed to reach. A new take on the double slit experiment has shown us that our understanding of light might not be complete or even accurate. And that's exactly why, in 2023, physicists at Imperial College London recreated this famous experiment to show light behaving both as particles and a wave in time rather than space. To understand the changes, we need to revisit the original experiment first. In 1801, a scientist named Thomas Young conducted an experiment with two slits and light. By doing so, he showed that light acts like waves, which was a huge deal at the time. Before that, people mostly thought of light as just tiny particles, but Young's experiment changed how we see and understand light. He found out that when you send particles like electrons through the slits one at a time, they still create an interference pattern, as if they're going through both slits and interfering with themselves. This suggests that these particles behave like waves, spreading out and interfering with each other. But when you try to observe which slit each particle goes through, the interference interference pattern disappears, and they behave like individual particles again. This whole experiment tells us that particles at a quantum level show characteristics of both particles and waves. It's like when you throw two stones in a pond and see ripples crossing each other. That's exactly what happens here. Even though you're shooting tiny particles at a time, they end up acting like waves, making a pattern of lines and spots. Speaking of patterns, the moon has tons of them, and our stunning miniature pieces are as real as they get. Explore the moon's mystical aura and grab one for yourself, available through our website. Now, as we know, light always moves at the same speed in a vacuum, at 299, 792, and 458 meters per second. No matter how fast you're moving or where you are, if you're looking at light traveling in a vacuum, it will always appear to move at that speed. However, things change when light interacts with matter. In air, it slows down a bit to 299,705, meters per second, which is 87,458 meters per second, slower than in a vacuum. In water, it moves even slower at around 225 million meters per second. And when light passes through glass, it can reach a maximum speed of about 200 million meters per second. So while light has a constant speed in a vacuum, it does slow down when it travels through different materials. When light moves through any medium, be it air, water, or glass, its electric and magnetic fields make electrons in that medium move around too. These moving electrons create a second light wave that mixes with the original light, but moves at a slightly different speed, depending on what the material is. When these two waves bump into each other, they can add up or cancel out their effects. So when you add up all these interactions, you get a new wave that actually travels slower than the original light. But once this mixed up wave gets past all the stuff making it slow down, it returns to being the original light and goes back to its normal speed acting like nothing happened. The fact that light's behavior is so versatile is the reason why scientists keep studying it to know more about it. In 1999, Lena Howe, a Danish researcher at Harvard, managed to slow down light incredibly to just 17 meters per second. She did this by passing light through an extremely chilled cloud of sodium atoms, almost as cold as it gets, to just one billionth of a degree above absolute zero. Then, two years later, she even stopped the light's speed completely before letting it continue its journey once the cloud warmed back up. This was obviously a revolutionary discovery back then, but at the same time, the NEC Research Institute made a strange discovery of their own. Researchers in Princeton sent a burst of light through a cesium atom cloud, and when they measured how fast it exited the cloud, they found out that the light seemed to leave before it had even entered. 
Now, this might sound like the light was breaking the rules here, but there's also a simple explanation for it. Although the light pulse appeared to move faster than the light itself, the light didn't actually break Einstein's theory of relativity. It was more of an optical illusion than a true violation of the laws of physics. But here's how we can understand this a little better. Think of a line of people holding hands in a dark room. They're passing a basketball to the person at the end of the line. When someone at the start of the line throws the ball, it travels quickly from person to person until it reaches the last one. But until that last person gets the ball, no one really knows what the message written on it says. Now, just like that, let's think of each person in that line as a particle of light passing energy along to the next person. We already know light moves incredibly fast, but until it reaches its final destination or interacts with something, like hitting a wall or entering your eyes, the message it carries isn't fully revealed. It's like the message of light, whether it's color or brightness, isn't fully shown until it interacts with something at the end of its journey. Keeping all of that in mind, scientists decided to look into this further and took the double slit experiment, giving it a twist in 2023. Instead of separating the slits in space, they separated them in time. In this experiment, they used a screen with two small openings and a detector behind it to catch the light that came through. When light acts like a wave, it splits into two waves that go through these openings, and when these waves meet on the other side, they mix together. Sometimes their peaks, also called high points, join and make the light stronger. But when a peak meets a dip or a low point, they cancel out and make the light weaker. This makes a pattern on the detector with bright and dark stripes. Even though light can also act like tiny particles called photons, when scientists shot just one photon at a time, the stripes still showed up on the detector. It's like that single photon somehow went through both openings at once and created this stripy pattern. In the newer version of the experiment, instead of changing the direction of the light, they changed its color by using a special material. This special material they used is called a metamaterial, which is designed by people to do things normal materials can't. It's layered gold and glass coated in indium tin oxide, which is also commonly used in screens for modern day smartphones. Not only can it be transparent, but it can also become reflective. Now, when scientists shot a laser at it, the light quickly changed the material to be reflective and then back to transparent, creating a tiny window of reflective surface for just a few femtoseconds. They called this a time slit, as they sent one laser pulse through this time slit. There weren't any significant changes in the laser's appearance. Instead, there was just a slight spread in its frequency. But when they sent two beams, one after the other, through these time slits, that's when they noticed something different. Even though everything else remained the same, like where the laser was sent from, where it reflected, and how it was received, when the two beams went through, they created an interference pattern. But here's why this was odd. This wasn't a pattern in space like before. Instead, it affected the laser's frequency. Not only that, but certain light frequencies within the laser faded away, just like how intensity fades in the regular double-slit experiment in 3D space. This probably happens on the other side of the slits too, just like in the regular double-slit experiment. But what this proves is that light seems to travel a path that involves both slits to create the interference pattern we observe. Now, if we build on this, Light always takes the quickest route possible to get from one place to another, moving as fast as it can. But here's the thing. It seems like light is exploring different paths to find the fastest one and testing the waters to see if there's a better way. These tests mess with other nearby light particles, even those a bit ahead or behind in time, which makes us think if we crack down on light's properties, will we finally know how to go back in time? Because even though we never actually see light taking these other paths or traveling at any speed other than its usual fast pace, for some strange reason, it seems like light is considering other routes through time, causing interference patterns. It's kind of like how lightning explores different directions before finding the perfect one and going down that path. But if light's able to bend the rules of physics and change its speeds, there might be some hope to go back in time, possibly in the future. But what do you think? Are scientists closer to learning everything there is to know about light? Or should they take a different approach to considering the possibilities of time travel? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.